Welcome students. Welcome to the today's lecture of course basic civil engineering which is a common course for all the core engineering branches for first year B.Tech. Myself Dr. Manoj Yadav, I work as an associate professor in Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, KIT's College of Engineering, Kolhapur, which is an autonomous institute. So, today we are going to learn about unit number 3 from the syllabus of basic civil engineering course, which is building planning and building components. This particular unit is mapped with course objective third of the course, which is students will be able to explain different types of planning, different types of planning principles, building components and building bylaws. So, every course will be having certain course objective so that after that course the student's objective is very clear. So, for this particular unit the objectives are here on this slide. So, you can see here students will learn about principles of planning then introduction to building bylaws various building bylaws by local authority we will see in see here then elements of substructure and superstructure and their functions then types of foundations shallow and deep foundation and their suitability for construction then types of buildings load bearing and frame structures and last one is introduction to types of load factor of safety and concept of stability of the building. So, these are the points we will cover in unit number 3. Now, before starting the first point that is principles of planning, we need to understand first what is meaning a building and what is the meaning of a building planning and why it is important. Okay. So, basically I can define a building very simple way that a building may be defined as an enclosed space covered by a roof. So, any building which is or any structure which is enclosed by a roof is called as building? No. Then it should have some specific requirements which are mentioned here. The first one is it should be utilized as per requirements that uh, which means that suppose a building is constructed for a purpose of residential use that building should not be used for any commercial activities. Then next point is it should be structurally safe. So, what it means any kind of structure you are constructing should be safe against all the safety parameters. Then it should give safety against fire. Then it should give good and hygienic conditions. It should maintain a proper sanitation. It should maintain a proper ventilation. So, sanitation and ventilation is very very important for a building and last one is it should satisfy the daylight requirements which means that a building should be constructed in a such a way that it uses maximum amount of sunlight at the daytime. Okay. Moving towards the next point that is types of buildings. So, broadly buildings can be classified into two types. First one residential buildings or also it is called as private buildings. It includes our homes, bungalows, flats, cottages, chawls, rest houses, hotels, dwellings, etc. So, these are called as residential or private buildings. Next one is industrial or public buildings which includes schools, colleges, offices, hospitals, factories, workshops, garages, hotels, markets, theatres, etc. So, these are public buildings. Means what? In public building and residential building, main difference is number of peoples. So, in industrial buildings, you can see here in the examples, lot of people or many number of people will be present at a time. So, its requirements, its design, its planning will be different than residential buildings. Note that residential and industrial buildings are deferred by nature and their function. Now, next point is what are the factors you should consider before planning of any kind of a building. Okay, before that you need to understand one very important thing. A civil engineer or an architect will design the building and certain principles are also there, scientific principles I can say. So, not only these scientific principles will help, also the civil engineer or architect has to involve his artistic or creative view so that 
a best result or best building planning can be uh, can come as a outcome okay now we'll see the factors affecting the planning that is the points a civil engineer or architect should consider before planning of any building number one owner's requirement the requirement of owner that is how much how many numbers of bedrooms sanitary blocks sizes of rooms so you have to first clarify with the owner what is his or her requirements as well as his or her living standards also you have to taken into account so that is the first point second point is scope or a purpose of the building the facilities to provide it to the building mainly depends on the purpose of the building according to the accordingly we have to plan the building so as i told whether the building is residential or a commercial or a, any office that you have to consider then 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 you have to design the or plan the building then financial fact feature or factor you can say it is very very important the planner should be the planning of the building should be done after considering the the financial conditions of the owner and the period required for the raising the finance that we have to taken care okay this is very important then site conditions another very important factor on which entire entire building planning is depending that is site conditions how is your site what is the shape of the plot what is the nature of the ground whether it is having a slope or not whether the ground or the plot is suitable for foundation of the building or not it plays a very vital role in planning then rules and regulation this is also important wherever you are planning a building whether that area is coming under the town or village or a metro city that you have to see means or uh, everywhere the local authorities or municipal corporations will be having a different bylaws that is for fsi that is floor space index side margin setbacks for all building height all these points has to be considered before planning the building so these are the few introduction points for building planning now we'll move towards our main agenda of this video that is module 1 principles of planning okay what are the principles of planning okay now we'll see the definition of building planning first i will read the definition then we'll dissect the definition and understand what is its actual meaning okay grouping and arrangement of components of a building in a systematic manner so as to form a homogeneous body with a comprehensive lookout to meet its functional purpose so this is the definition so first thing is grouping and arrangement of components of the building so first thing you need to understand what is the meaning of components of building so please take a 10 seconds and you can see around you that is you can notice any building components or not yes then you can say that the walls windows your roof or all the electrical fittings these all are building components only okay so grouping and arrangement of these building component components so as your building should perform as a homogeneous body and it should serve its purpose very carefully so that is the meaning of building planning okay also it is called as well organization of building components okay okay now moving towards next point that is on which points your building planning is dependent on so number 1 human habitation and their requirements so whether it the building has been constructed for human habitation or not that is i can give a example like store rooms store rooms are not designed for human habitations they are only designed for storing the material okay then components parts sizes and their interrelationship then topography and shape of the plot climatic conditions very important as per the climatic conditions your uh, building design planning everything will change then location and the neighborhood these are the points on which your building planning will be depending upon now before moving towards before moving forward i want to show you this very picture 
of a 3D view of a 3 BHK flat. This is a very good example of a very good planning. So you can see here in the very less space, the designer has able to manage three bedrooms, one kitchen, one hall. You can see there each bedroom is having a balcony. So this is a very good example of a good planning that is good grouping and arrangement of all the building components. Okay. Now we will move towards building planning principles. Okay. So there are total 11 building planning principles we are going to discuss. First one is aspect, then prospect, privacy, furniture requirement, roominess, grouping, circulation, sanitation, flexibility, elegance and last one is economy. So, one by one, we will discuss the building planning principles. So, number one, uh, building planning principle is aspect. So, what is the meaning of aspect? It is a placement of different rooms of the houses in accordance with our activities at the different hours of the day. So, what is the meaning of aspect is a direction of the room. Which direction you are giving which room as per the day-to-day uh, -day activities or uh, activities we perform at different hours of the day. Okay, A room which is having a light and air from a particular direction is says, said to have an aspect of that room. Okay, Why aspect is important? The room should get enough sunlight and air which gives cheerful atmosphere, comfort and hygienic conditions. So, we will understand the aspect with respect to some examples which is given in this table. So, you can see here, there are different type of rooms are given in the first column. Then recommended aspect is given that is recommended direction in which you have to design your room, particular room is given. And last one is, last column is influencing factors that is its significance is given. So, we will take the example, first example that is bedroom. So, recommended aspects are southwest, west or northwest. Why? Because to receive a plentiful of breeze in the summer time. So, that is the recommended aspect given for the bedroom. Next example, we can consider kitchen. Mostly, we have to design or plan the kitchen in the east side or rarely northeast. Why? Because it should receive or kitchen should receive the morning sun which is germicidal. That is, morning sunlight should enter in your kitchen so that whatever germs present in the air as well as in your kitchen can be killed. It is useful in purifying the air. It should be also well illuminated and cool at the afternoon. So, these are the few recommended aspects are given for different type of rooms. Okay. Then moving towards the next planning principle which is prospect. What is meaning of prospect? A building is said to have prospect when it presents a good and pleasant appearance when seen from outside. It is the actual meaning of prospect is to uh, the external views as seen from the certain rooms of the building means it, whatever you are suppose you are sitting in your house and what views you are getting from the outside that is the prospect of that particular room. It also includes concealment of some undesirable views in a given outlook. So, we will also we will understand this prospect by one example. So, you can see here I have given one diagram here to understand better what is mean by prospect. So, you can see here one building's plan is given here. On one side a garbage pot is there and on the other hand one lake is there. So, you can see there where the garbage pot is present a blank wall is given to conceal that look and on the other hand three balconies are provided in on the side of lake so that the occupants of the building can enjoy the view of lake. At the same time a bad view of a garbage pot can be prevented. So, that is the prospect of that room. Another example, arrangement of windows in a such a way that to conceal a particular view. So, you can see here three examples are given. So, you can see here three examples are given here. First one is, first one is this one. So, different different directions of windows are given so that you can uh, conceal the bad view from the outside. So, sides. Uh, so, first example is from the in a certain angle you can give your windows or if you are having a very good view you can provide an entire wall as a wall sorry entire uh, 
विंडो एज अ वॉल देन द थर्ड वन इज डायरेक्टली इन द नाइंटी डिग्री ऑल्सो यू कैन प्रोवाइड द विंडो सो दैट ए बैड व्यू कैन बी कंसील्ड ओके नाउ मूविंग टूवर्ड्स थर्ड एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लैनिंग प्रिंसिपल दैट इज प्राइवेसी सो प्राइवेसी कैन बी ऑफ फ्रॉम वॉट फर्स्ट वन इज फ्रॉम साइट then from sound confidential discussions and all and it can be for both sight and sound okay so we we should get a privacy from those things and privacy can be broadly classified into two types one is internal privacy and one is external privacy so we'll understand what is it number 1 internal privacy it is the privacy within the building it can be achieved by correct positioning of doors and openings of the shutters that is providing a windows so proper grouping of rooms example providing buffer area between bedrooms and other rooms then vertical segregation is also possible that is providing drawing room dining and kitchen at the first floor and providing the bedrooms at the second floor so that is how you can achieve your internal privacy then next point is external privacy that is privacy from out outside buildings privacy from people or traffic which is there outside of your building okay how you can achieve it you can provide a compound wall of a height 1.35 to 1.5 1.5 meters then we can plant trees along along with your compound wall so that it can act as a sound and sight barrier then you can provide curtains screen walls and draw off walls on veranda so that you can get a exterior privacy now next planning principle is fourth one furniture requirement okay it is very easy before planning of any building you have to take the requirements from the owner that what kind of furniture and what size furniture that person wants in that particular room so that you can design the size of that particular room because after placing all the permanent furniture a circulation space should be remain in that room so people can easily access or leave that particular room then number 5 roominess what is roominess it is a feeling created after a room is well furnished with all the permanent furnitures as spacious and well planned okay i can give a example that if suppose uh, you are sitting in one room and which is painted very dark red color then you will feel somewhat you will feel somewhat what you call you will feel very undesirable in that particular room so that you have to give some certain points so that you will feel the roominess in that particular building so how we, how it can be achieved so first point is maximum use of a room with a possible dimensions then rectangular room gives a better outlook as compared to square room so maximum you try to give the rectangular rooms the recommended length to breadth ratio is 1.2 to 1.5 if the ratio is exceeding 2 then your room will give a tunnel like feeling then next point is similarly height also plays very important role you try to give a maximum height to a particular room then number 5 is light colors can effect a can give a effect of more space as i given the example if a uh, room is painted with light colors then you will feel the roominess in that particular room next planning principle is grouping it is an arrangement of different rooms with reference to their functions it improves comfort privacy and convenience and minimizes the circulation so how you can group uh, some some rooms the following points can be considered for number 1 veranda should be adjacent to the drawing room dining room should be close to the kitchen bedroom toilet and dressing room should be grouped together bathroom and toilet should be nearer to each other staircase should be easily accessible from all the rooms toilet should be away from dining room so these are some uh, recommendations given for grouping the different type of rooms so that our circulation and privacy can be achieved so here we have seen six planning principles out of 11 in this particular lecture next in the next lecture we will see the remaining uh, planning principles in detail